Okay guys, so in this video we're going to talk about whether Tesla stock is it overvalued or undervalued at its current point. So uh, I posted a video, you guys can check out the link in the description on why I think Tesla stock is headed to $3,000 per share by 2025. And I got some very interesting comments on that video. A lot of you guys saying that the stock is grossly overvalued. A lot of you guys saying that the company loses too much money. So it seems to be a, a, a split between the Tesla bulls and the Tesla bears. So I'm making this video out here kind of guys to give you a different perspective on what Tesla is capable of and the first thing I want to do is is I want to show you guys a very 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 important uh, document which is called the Q4 2019 update. After I checked out this document I was blown away by Tesla so let's get right into it guys. So what, I, what this is is that every year uh, companies are forced by the SEC to post a fiscal year uh, update. So, of course, they report uh, their earnings every three months, but at the end of the year, usually at the end of the fourth, fourth quarter, they post an update. So, you guys can find this on ir.tesla.com, and I was absolutely blown away by what Tesla has accomplished in the last year and what they're planning in the future. So I want to just get right into it, guys. So the first thing that I have to tell about people is that everyone says Tesla is burning through money, but the company actually generated a $1 billion operating cash flow, positive cash flow, in the fourth quarter. So for you guys say that Tesla is losing money hand over fish, free cash flow is a very important metric. It shows money that is freed up to grow the business. and Tesla was able to increase their cash uh, stockpile, uh, obviously before the coronavirus issue and everything like that. So another thing I want to talk about with this company is that before the coronavirus epidemic happened, the company was doing very well, hit record deliveries in Q4, and as I shared in a previous video, they actually hit record deliveries in Q1 as well as 2020. You guys can check out that previous video. I'm going to put all the links in the description. But the most important thing about Tesla is basically the trend they're going in. So I just want to quickly show you guys a couple numbers here. So a lot of fascinating stuff. So if you guys take a look at basically uh, a lot of the numbers here, I'm going to go down and show you guys this section right here. So obviously it's very, very hard for us to use PE ratio with Tesla because Tesla has some profitable quarters, has some unprofitable quarters. But what we're looking at is we're looking at is the company growing in the right direction. So that's going to help us give a fair value for the company right now because we want to see how much will this stock be worth in a couple years. Tesla is definitely not a stock that uh, you want to just buy now and think you're going to get rich overnight. We're still in the process of moving uh, towards electric vehicles. And I want to show you guys a quick graph before I go right back to this quarterly report. So if you guys take a look at this chart, this is the EV sales by by region based on the globe and as you can see here this decade expects electric vehicle sales to absolutely skyrocket so you know in the past couple of years a lot of people were, were kind of hesitant to get on to the electric vehicle market and that's kind of similar to the I remember back when I was in uh, I believe when I was in high school and college and I saw everyone with these smartphones now back when I was in high school uh, only the really rich kids had uh, like smartphones and I remember like one of the first ones people had was the Palm Pilot and the Blackberry so if you guys if you guys for you my younger viewers those were basically some old like the tr the original smartphone uh, this Palm Pilot you could do some amazing things on it and this uh, it was just incredible, you know. Uh, everyone had these handheld phones. I had like an old school Nokia phone, and the technology seemed so weird at first. But just 10 years later, now everyone has a smartphone, and if you don't have a smartphone, you're considered weird. So, guys, that's how fast technology can change people's mindsets, and how just in, a, in five to 10 years, something can go from seeing so weird to now everyone has a, a, an iPhone or, or a Samsung or some type of smartphone. And that's the same type of compounded annual growth that is going to happen in electric electric, electric vehicle market. With this whole global lockdown, people are starting to realize how much less pollution there is in a lot of major cities, how much cleaner the air is, and I think people are going to want to maintain that kind of peaceness and calmness by using electric vehicles that don't emit any dangerous emissions. 
So guys, if you take a look at this chart, expect the electric vehicle sales across the world to absolutely explode with Europe and USA as the clear leaders and China in there as well. So guys, take a look at this graph. Where's that position Tesla? Well, obviously that's gonna position Tesla in a very, very nice spot because they are by far the leader and electric vehicle sales in the United States, and they're working on moving their footprint to China and other countries with the Gigafactory in Shanghai and things like that. So what we're worried about here is let's quickly go a little bit more into the numbers and see how the production is going. So the Model 3 production is up 42% year over year, and remember now, Tesla is not just about selling cars, they're also a solar company as well, and they've increased their megawatts in uh, storage deployed 130 six percent and with their charger stations which is another really key element of their business because tesla actually charges you money to charge your car it's just like filling up your tank with gasoline and that's another way for the company to ger generate revenue and as you guys can see here uh they had uh an increase of supercharger connectors and stations of 28 percent and 34 percent year over year so what does that mean, guys? Well, it basically means that Tesla is still a growing company and that the company has a lot of growth to go in the future. And if you, if I quickly go back to that graph, remember now we're just on the tip of the iceberg when it comes to electric vehicle sales. So you're going to see an explosive and explosive growth in Tesla stock in the future. So now let's go back to that report and let's dig a little bit deeper into what's actually going on. So if you take a look at it, uh, now, obviously, this is going to be slowed down a bit due to the coronavirus, but Tesla has a lot, a lot of products coming out. So they're still in construction and the development of the for the Berlin uh, for the deployment of vehicles in Berlin. They're still working on the Model Y in Shanghai, and they have a lot of future products in the pipeline, including the Tesla Semi, the Roadster, and the Cyber truck and as you guys can see the model 3 car is pretty much their their flagship product and that his and their deliveries have skyrocketed from you know from very small amount back in 2017 to delivering basically around 300,000 uh model 3s in, in last year and they expect that production to ramp up now they expect to hit they're shooting for around 500,000 units. Obviously, that number will probably be reduced due to the whole coronavirus epidemic. But the fact is, is that this company is starting to put electric vehicles on the market, and they're starting to make a lot of progress. So also, I want to show you guys another part, which is their energy business. And this is the part that a lot of people don't talk about with Tesla. They're so obsessed with their so-called overpriced cars. But guys, this is a diversified company that is heading is changing with the times so if you take a look at this when i was mentioned earlier about their energy storage deployed it talks about how in 2009 we deployed 1.65 gigawatts of energy storage more than we deployed in all years combined so the energy storage deployment reached an all-time high of 530 megawatts in q4 the first deployments of their mega pack our new commercial scale three megawatt integrated storage system that is pre-assembled at the gigafactory nevada as a single unit and then they also install roofs as well as you guys could take a look at their solar glass roof installation so there's a lot of profit and a lot of potential that people aren't talking about when they talk about tesla they seem to forget that solar unit and i think that is gravy because even with the even with the model 3 and the model y and all their cars like that tesla is going to be a strong company because anytime you have a company that is replacing basically traditional cars that is a huge opportunity because people have, have brand loyalty to Tesla, just like they have brand loyalty to Apple. I actually just talked with a friend uh, who just broke his iPhone, and now he's trying, he can't really get a new one. And he said to me, you know, after going to Apple products, I can't go back. So that is a similar thing with Tesla owners. A lot of Tesla owners, once they buy a Tesla, they never go back to another car company. So remember, these people are going to continue to hold on to their Teslas and upgrading them, in, them into the future. And once a Tesla is a type of company, where once people drive one they don't want to drive anything else so really guys keep that in mind long term in terms of the brand loyalty that Tesla has built and here I'm going to show you guys a couple of pictures 
and things like that of some of the products that are coming out now let's get to valuation guys so we've already showed you guys kind of where Tesla is heading so now is the company overvalued or is the company undervalued well I'll give you guys a couple key metrics and I want you guys to kind of just uh, listen to my opinion because like I said it's just an opinion but I'm using these numbers to kind of give you guys uh, an idea because the company does not really have a PE ratio and things like that so a lot of the key traditional metrics that we would use to value stocks we really can't use so let's just take the numbers that okay guys so with that in mind I want you guys to take a look at some of these valuation numbers because I think they help explain why Tesla is pretty much trading at a decent value so for me it's not super overvalued but it's not super undervalued it's at a very nice price point at around five hundred dollars so if we take a look at the current market capitalization it's around 88 billion dollars now keep in mind all of that future growth that we have coming in the next five to ten years and how Tesla has the potential to be a trillion dollar company and remember my price target that I have of around three thousand dollars per share in five years which would basically value the company at six times its current uh, stock price. So if you take a look at the enterprise value, so enterprise value is market capitalization plus debt minus cash. It Based on that, Tesla is basically around fairly valued. If you were to acquire the entire company, you would pay around $87 billion for it. So the market cap is not there's only a, a little bit above that number as of I'm recording the video. And another key metric I want to look at is price to sales ratio, guys. So when you don't have positive price to earnings because a company is in growth mode, I like to use the price to sales number. I think a price to sales ratio of three is very reasonable. There's, it's very in line with lots of other companies like Apple and Amazon and stuff like that. Many of those companies as well have a price to sales ratio of around three or so. So for me, it's at a nice value. And I talk about that free cash flow number because that is a very important metric a lot of growth companies out there they don't have positive free cash flow but Tesla is one of them and as I mentioned earlier in the quarterly update uh, Elon Musk is very well aware that the company should remain free cash flow positive well into the future so now I want to show you an interesting article that was posted by Barron's it says this might be the best time to buy stock ever and it talks about how Tesla has a wide range of prices, so it's valued at $240 a share at JP Morgan and $1,000 a share at JMP Securities. So obviously, this is a big, huge spread. So who's really white right on the price? Well, I want to show you guys something very interesting on another way that you can value Tesla stock. And I want to show you guys this article. And I referred to this article back on Forbes where I talked about how Tesla has one of the best compounded annual growth returns for in terms of stock price 44% over the last eight years so guys numbers really don't lie and not every stock has gone up in this bull market there have been a lot of companies that have ebbed and flowed have basically gone you know sideways or or have ran up and ran down but Tesla is a stock that continues to churn out if you invested in Tesla stock back in 2012 and 2014 you're sitting very pretty right now so guys numbers don't lie and there's a reason why this stock price continues to climb because people are continuing to see the impact of electric vehicles and how important they're going to be to not only the United States but the entire world so in this article it talks about uh, expecting Tesla to reach a positive net income of around 33 billion dollars and 20 30 so guys just according to this article they have a very conservative estimate theirs is actually much lower than mine they say the stock could be worth around two thousand dollars at 2025 and more than three thousand five hundred dollars in 2030 and I think they're right now I don't really agree with the price but I do like the their idea and their concept of the stock going up a ton in the future and the reason why the stock is going to go a ton in the future is because they are listening to their customer and sales don't lie delivering over 400,000 vehicles uh, delivering over on range to deliver around 4,000 vehicles this year according to that first quarterly uh, release that they posted of, of delivering uh, of just around 80,000 vehicles something like that and on pace to continue production even though the coronavirus epidemic has hit numbers are still strong guys numbers don't 
lie. So guys, for my fair valuation of Tesla stock, I think at anywhere, of course, I, when I buy something like this, I plan to hold on to a long time and I plan to pick up an electric vehicle myself preferably a Tesla by the end of the year or 2021. So for me, the company continues to deliver vehicles and they continue to produce. So I want to show you guys a long-term chart of Tesla to get you an idea of kind of where we're going visually. So if you were back in 2013, you've already 10 extra money, much more than that. But what I'm saying is, guys, is that I think because of the volatility and the stock price, a lot of people have thought it was overvalued. It absolutely, Tesla trading at around $900 is completely overvalued. And we've already seen the stock market uh, correct itself based on that overvalue. That price didn't last for long. So if you're looking at it, that price point was only there for less than two months. So for me at $500, since the stock is worth $3,000 to me by 2025, this is a fair valuation for this company. It's based on its current production and its current free cash flow that's coming in and earning $24 billion a year with revenue increasing year over year. I think you're going to be pretty happy if you invest in Tesla stock now. So I think one of the, I want to wrap this video up, but I want you guys to, to, to don't be like me when, when I started seeing everyone with Palm Pilots and I started seeing you know, everyone with Blackberry. I didn't understand that we were transitioning into the smartphone uh, era. And I was, I was fighting change. So I think that's what a lot of people are doing here when it comes to Tesla stock. We're fighting electric vehicles. You know, you ask people, will they ever drive an electric car? And they say no. I think they're going to change their tune within the next couple of years when they see how much cheaper it is in terms of spending money on gas, how much more convenient it is to charge, and just the fact that it's just better for the environment. So there's that humanitarian part of it as well. So I hope this guy's clear this up on whether Tesla stock is overvalued or undervalued. For me, at $500, it's a great price. I entered personally at $520. I'm not worried about... Uh, what the market is doing right now. I'm worried about what the market is doing in 2021 and 2022 because my goal is to get this company now while people are against it and hopefully my money will grow a lot more in the future when everyone comes around and embraces electric vehicles and remember solar energy uh, capabilities in terms of panels and stuff like that. So that's it for now, guys. I hope that I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope this cleared some things up on, on how Tesla should be valued. Like I said, make, make your own personal judgment on whether you think Tesla stock is overvalued or not. Let me know what you think in the comments. So if you enjoyed this video, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content on Tesla. I'm an official disclosure. I am a Tesla, Tesla shareholder, and I'll be uh, chiming in in future videos on how I'm adding to my position because I really don't plan to sell my Tesla position ever. I really want to see this company grow, and I really like the fact that even during the coronavirus pandemic this company is still making ventilators and adding value to society so that's it for now guys uh, until next time take care